What up, Internet? Corinne here, and you're watching Corinne vs. Pig. Charlotte Brooks commented on my last video saying that we should make gummy worms based on this pin. Pinometer, what do you think? Cowabunga. But what if I were to tell you that I discovered two other pins using totally different techniques and ingredients by using the same final product picture as the first one? Bullshit. I shall do all three pins, and then we will see who is the one true pin. The first pin says, to pack straws into a cup and secure them with a rubber band. Pour in jelly carefully. P.S. Jello is a brand name of a thing that many other countries outside of the United States refer to as jelly. A little knowledge there. Next, the pin says, once jelly is set, rinse with some warm water to release the worms from their straws. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now that that's, that's not gonna work. The best method I found for removing them is with a rolling pin using lots of pressure. Excess water is gonna destroy these little guys. They pretty much fall apart at the touch. I also found that putting some parchment paper down before rolling them out and also wiping the straws down with a clean towel really helped the process. But even then, they still didn't stay together very long. Pin number two calls for less water to be mixed with the jello, which theoretically would help. But this method of placing straws in the jello is just ridiculous. I mean, come on. The straws float in the jello. You float straws! You have to spend a bunch of time squeezing the air out of them while filling them with liquid. Also dyeing your hands at the same time because you forgot to wear gloves. Long story short, this method also doesn't work. Upon further research of pin three, I found what I believe to be the original post that this here final shot is from on Instructables. The original recipe calls for heavy whipping cream. Where was that before? I don't know. Two packs of Jello for a total of six ounces, one cup less of water than what the Jello recipe usually calls for, and in the comments section, people were confused about how much unflavored gelatin they should add. There were others who said that they used all four envelopes within this package, and it worked for them, so that's what I'm gonna do. This post also explains the mystery behind the two colors and the worms. After the liquid cools, you're supposed to add three-fourths of a cup of heavy cream. Duh! Mine curdled right away and it was really gross and it smelled kind of like warm dairy, but whatever. I stirred it up and into the milk carton, straw holder thingy it went. I let them set in the fridge for about six hours and using all the techniques I learned from past errors, I got some pretty awesome looking worms. I got worms. The author of the original post not only recommends eating these little worms, but putting them in a bowl in the fridge to scare housemates. The amount of gelatin that is in these things is pretty scary. It don't really taste like anything. But Rob and I seriously watch so many scary movies that a little bowl of worms ain't gonna do shit. And since I had this extra box of jello, I decided to go for a classic. Have you seen my sunglasses? Can you check in the room? Go check in the car. Have you seen my keys? Alright, I can't find my keys or my sunglasses. Oh, come the f on, really? <laughs> wow.